start it and the intro to this episode will you just will just be you saying that so do that again no 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 <laughs> do it again, do it again. Uh, uh, that, that's something else completely all right it has nothing to do with community yeah 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 it's a different community All right, now that we've got that out of the way, welcome back and to our final episode of this community table read. Um, as you've noticed, we're all wearing the same clothes. That's because we did this in one session. Uh, before we get started, what I want to do is I want to go around and I want everybody to say what their favorite part about the show community is, just because it is a near perfect show, at least all the way up until season three. And then, you know, so Jason Penguin who's taking the role as Dean Pelton. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, chemistry, the entire cast. The entire cast has great chemistry. They riff off each other uh, like, th like they've known each other forever. All right, very poignant. Me, Jake Ferrier, playing uh, Pierce Hawthorne. My favorite part about the show is that everything, again, at least up until you know the first few seasons, everything that is brought up in an episode plays out in... The episode. What is it? Hitchcock's gun? Chekhov? Chekhov's check off. Check off gun. There you go. Gonna... Hey, I'm a film student. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Chekhov's gun. That, that. All right. Kyle. Uh, Peter Zach playing the role of Jeff Winger. Um, I, I just really how, I just really like how, how smart the uh, writing is and how it it draws on like every pop culture thing in existence, and yet it do it doesn't do that just to be quirky. It 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 serves like a purpose. Like, um, I, it's hard to think of a, an exact example, but uh, I think we can all think of a specific time. Well, like the Dungeons and Dragons episode that we were talking about. It's like it's not just doing that just to do that. They're you know they're using that uh, to to play on the idea of how to, you know, save someone from killing themselves. And I, I just think it's, it's a really smart show. That's what got me into it. Cool. So. Autumn walking back once again, finally playing the role of Britta Perry. Oh, I don't really know what my favorite part is. I just started watching the show, That's but I answer. also Bad really answer. like the chemistry and the jokes. Copycat. The jokes are really great. <laughs> All right, now that we've heard that bad answer, hopefully we'll hear a good one from Claire Smith once again as Annie Edison. I also just started watching the show, but I, uh, I like, I find the characters very relatable. Like, and also- no, that's a good answer. People like that wouldn't normally necessarily be in a group on an actual community college like campus, but they interact well anyway. All right. So we've got Jared Donald playing the role of Roy the Wonder Boy. Or sorry, Troy. Thank you. Also, I just want to point out you called him Troy Baker in the pilot. Fake fan. Uh, but my <laughs> wait, what's his last name? Barnes. Barnes. That's what I said. That's what I said. That's exactly <laughs> but, what I said. But I mean, I'm really surprised that no one else said this. Obviously, the best part of community is my future ex-wife, Allison Bree. So well, there's two. Yep, yep. If you know, you know. <laughs> really, it would be three. Three? Three. Wait, who's Troy Baker? Uh, Troy Baker's a person. Troy Baker is a... Uh, is a football guy? A football guy. Good job, Kyle. He's a uh, No, he's not. Actor. Yeah, he's a voice, voice actor. actor. Oh, okay. Who does wait, he play? Wait. Hold on. Does he play Joel from The Last of Us? Yes. I believe. Okay. okay, there you go. There you go. Oh. Um, he, he was also okay, in the newest infamous that. game. He's been a Re regardless. I definitely said Troy Bonds. All right, just <laughs> I, that's I, I, I said it. And when you when you listen back, you'll you'll know. All right, then we've got Geiger, not William. Narration hey. and action description. Yeah, uh, I guess my favorite part about Community is just the timing, the way jokes mingle together, and just the cast. It really is my favorite. What it really is. All right. Well, really do you is. do you think that or do you guess that? Which one is it? I think it. Okay. All right. Cool. 
Chris, I don't even I don't even want to introduce you. I don't know what you're doing. I'm having a hard time. Troy, Abed, go ahead. I just get get get. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, my favorite thing about it is Dan Harmon. I'm a huge fan of him and his brand of writing and and comedy. Uh, and he gives uh, equal attention to each character and fleshes them out. And uh, yeah. 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 That's, yeah. That's why I like it. Oh wait. What? 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 Yeah, Kyle got it. And once again, we've got one of the boys from Unscripted, Luke, playing uh, all other roles, most notably Professor Duncan. In this episode, who do we who do we got in this episode? Oh, uh, Professor Slater. Uh, That's right. Yeah, yeah. Slater, Starburns, and Old Woman on Phone. Let him have it. Uh, my favorite part of community is probably uh, uh, how like uh, meta Abed gets and all of like it can, kind of like the the commentary that he gets on like what it is to be a film major. Very nice. Uh, most of us are film majors here. Who is Claire? You're not. You already graduated. You you got big nutrition smarts, so we're not. <laughs> But everybody else here, uh, film majors, know exactly what we're talking about. All right, Zucchini as Shirley Bennett. I knew that one, see? What um, you got? So I actually started this during quarantine. So, like, I didn't have anything else to do other than watch the show. And I really liked how relatable each character was. But especially I liked it more as they progressed within their character arc because I feel like it was natural and it wasn't just, like, randomly put there. Like, it was very intentional for each each event that they kind of shared and each thing that they had to go through in order to um, progress as a character. So, pretty cool. Cool. And then we've got the other boy, the other Shaggy Goose Egg uh, from the Al Pacino's Prison Scene podcast, Thomas Butler playing Senior Chang, the up and coming, he's an up and coming film journalist or he has no idea. Um, I don't know where he's at. Does he want to say something? Yeah, my favorite thing is that the show got canceled. I like that part. Thank <laughs> got him. Oh. Hey. Also, it's on uh, Amazon Prime, Hulu, and Netflix, so that's pretty cool. Six seasons in a movie, y'all. Six seasons in a movie. That's right. All right, I was hoping that he would go into something and then like give us a thousand for an essay, but he didn't do that. But that's okay. Oh, he's so, not you. He's the one that does it, like in discussion posts. What are you talking about? Well, you're the one who does it in the podcast, so. I don't know if that's true or not. Uh, if you want to see if that's true, make sure you click the links in the description. I don't think that's true, but who knows? Y'all be the judge of that. Let's all shut up and get right down to nitty gritty. Season one, episode six, introduction to statistics. All right. This episode time. Episode seven. All right. Start well, okay, talk. Sorry, episode seven. episode seven in the show, episode six on the script. Okay, I'm sorry that I can't be perfect like everyone else. Remember, I'm playing Pierce for a reason because I'm an old fart and I'm stupid. Okay, oh, I was Does gonna make go you in happy? a different direction with that. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, well, yeah, all right, from the top, cold open, fade in, exterior slash interior, campus slash hallway, establishing. Day one, Greendale and the hallways are decorated for Halloween. Interior, Spanish classroom continuous. The study group listens as Senior Chang addresses the class. As you know, faculty at Greendale are required to give extra credit to students who organize class-related events during what would otherwise be our free time. No student in any department has ever exercised this option until now. And he turns and gives everyone an authentic enthusiastic wave. Tonight in the library, I will be hosting a Dia de los Muertos party. Dia de los Mu Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is sometimes referred to as Mexican Halloween. A name quite offensive to people familiar with Mexican Halloween as a sexual position. At any rate, if you show up, you get extra credit. Me, I don't even get paid. See you tonight. Jenks shuffles out, people start to leave. Um, most of you have responded to my evite, but some of you remain evasive, so... Count me in. 
This is my first college party. I've got some tequila. I just rented a Van Wilder too. The rice of Taj. And, and look. She holds up her hand. Early, you took off your wedding ring. My husband's been gone for six months and it is time for me to embrace being single. Message received. Uh, I'm still waiting to hear from Jeff and Pierce. I thought I shot you a response here from my pocket phone here. Access email. Access email. You're not going to Annie's party? I have a conflict. It conflicts with the enjoyment of my life. I can't figure out how this voice command thing works. I feel like my mother. Calling mother. Yeah. SFX phone rings. What? Uh, speaking of enjoying life, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but are you sure you don't ever, you don't see anything non-platonic ever crystallizing between us? I'm sure. Oh, good, because one of my professors is really hot, but I wanted to give you the right of first refusal. Before Britta can react. Hello? Pierce? Mom? Pierce, honey, how's the school going? Are you popular? I can't talk. I'm going into a tunnel. R R number. Are you taking your pills? Pierce jams the phone in his bag and exits. Fade out. End of cold open. Act one. Fade in. Into here your statistics classroom. Later. Professor Slater. Beautiful. Sophisticated. Writes on the board. The Bernoulli distribution is the number of success in a sequence of independent yes-no experiments. Pan across students taking copious notes, landing on Jeff, who smiles at her, doing his best to send an I'm into you vibe with his eyes. She glances at her watch. Okay, for the quiz Monday, brush up on chapters three and four. Students file out, Jeff approaches. Bernoulli is one of my favorites. Little known facts, statistics were not his only love. He's also famous for his French sauce used on meat and poultry. That's Bernays. We may need to settle this at a restaurant. That's cute. A little aggressive, but as a busy, confident woman of authority, I'm attracted to men who take charge. Are you being sarcastic, or am I nailing it? You were nailing it until you had to ask. Damn it. Starting over. Hey, you in the skirt. Date me. I'd like to, Mr. Winger. You're tall, you dress nice, and I've graded enough of your tests to know I'd never feel mentally inadequate. Thank you. Only problem, I don't date students. She exits. Jeff goes after her. Interior hallway continuous. Slater passes Shirley and Britta with Jeff in hot pursuit. He sees Britta stops for a moment. Oh, hey. Awkward. How small is this campus? Shirley watches Jeff pursue Professor Slater down the hall. Mm, bastard. It's fine. I don't care. It's disgusting the way men behave. Did you see the Katherine Heigl movie poster where Gerard Butler has a heart over his wiener? That resonated with me. Yeah, but just to repeat, I don't care what Jeff does. Bastard. Jeff walks with Slater. I'm barely a student. I'm older than you. I own a Lexus. I saw Ghostbusters in the theater. Look, my gums are receding. It's uncanny how many of my buttons you're finding, but I have a personal rule about this, and I stick to it. Have a cup of coffee with me. I bet I can change your mind. Oh, I know you can. That's why you're not getting the chance. She smiles and exits. Jeff watches her walk away. He turns, smiling, and is suddenly face-to-face -face with Annie. Are you coming to my Dia de los Muertos party? I'm definitely going to try to swing by. Jeff starts off. She follows. Then I can mark you down as definitely being there from seven sharp until upside down Spanish question mark. Here's the thing. No, here's the thing. I am putting my foot down. Oh. We lost her. No. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. She put her foot down too hard. Yeah. <laughs> it seems her Wi Fi connection is not clear. Uh, all right, well. Do you, do you think you, you're you're almost as funny as Chris, man? 
Okay. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah. let's see. Oh, it's just going to be ribbons. Not in a scene, Thomas. It's your fault, Chris. What would you call her? Hey, Chris, I still haven't saved her number into my phone. Is that cool? You know, I know you guys are like singing. What? Each other, so. Wait, what'd you say? <laughs> I said, I still haven't saved her number into my phone. Like, is that cool? I know you guys are seeing each other. You know, I don't. Uh, no, 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 you need to delete it. <laughs> no, no, he doesn't have it. Is what he I said. don't have it. I'm oh, oh you don't have it? Yeah, yeah. okay. We'll Just keep, keep it like that? Yeah. Uh, so JP, what time should we be over for the after party? <laughs> yeah, I heard you're making dinner, so like Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, HBO Max girl's making dinner. Oh uh, yeah, sorry. I heard she's what making is she dinner. what is she making us? Yeah. Uh she mm, smells like uh smells like steak. Oh well, hey, it just so happened. Whoa, oh, fancy! Oh. Do you got a nice cabernet with that, or what? <laughs> you should have had my pizza. My pizza is better than her steak. Dude, that was so good. good. That was really good. Of course, we were also very um happy. You were very happy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. <laughs> Claire. All right. So I really think that Claire is not very. Oh. Sorry. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey. Sorry, guys. My internet. Is... This messed up the order. Now you're you're in the wrong spot. Now you can move her though. Yeah. Can I? How do I do that? Yeah, well, can I? Her picture, and then you can drag it. Whoa! Whoa! Now I'm moving. Okay. Whoa! Where am I at now? What the <laughs> heck? I messed this whole thing up. Everybody's in a different place now. <laughs> I don't know what happened. That's on you, man. That's on you. Yeah. Let me see if I can fix it. Can I control Z? I don't oh know. Oh my I'm god. What is happening? <laughs> I gotta I gotta fix everybody. You know Dude, this is a really good idea. I'm happy we're doing this. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Very organized, y'all. Yeah. At least I'm at least I'm out of my closet. <laughs> oh. It's a that's a that's something to say. Oh, the Chris is gone. Hey, he changed his name. <laughs> oh, look, he came back into the closet. Chris, you have the biggest thigh gap I've ever seen. Have the big. It's the uh, the uh, uh, the tight pants don't help, you know. I also love how you're like, oh, I never wear hats, and then <laughs> I give you the NASA hat. He really doesn't wear hats. Like, and I and I haven't seen you not wear it. <laughs> it's my new thing. <laughs> you look like Drake Bell in the Fairly Odd Parents movie. <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> Damn. All right. All right. Enough joking around. All right. Let's go. Let's go back to. Uh, Can be um, <laughs> Let's go back to Are You Coming to My Dia Dias de los Muertos Park? Let's start back. Oh, okay. Where is that? Oh, okay. <clears throat> also, I, I keep having this tendency if I don't like the way that y'all do something, I want to be like, stop and be like, all right, let's go back. This is how I want you to do it. Yeah. And it's hard yeah. for me not to. That's why you're the tyrant. Well, I'm the tyrant. All right. Let's go. Maybe I should say something like, like we had technical difficulties. I think just keep that and there you go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, boom, you did it. Yeah, well, I guess you're right. Okay. All right, hit it. Are you coming to my Dia de las Muertos party? I'm definitely going to try to swing by. Jeff starts off, she follows. Then I can mark you down as definitely being there from seven sharp till upside down Spanish question mark. Here's the thing. No, here's the thing. I am putting my foot down. Do you understand? I am asserting myself and I'm making eye contact and it is achieving results. Annie, you have such a bright future. Don't throw it away on self-help tapes at, from the gas station. Jeff, you're the cool guy, okay? If you show up, it'll be the first party I host where everyone doesn't say they need to get home in time for the news. Annie starts to cry. That won't work. Last time you did this, I kept a vial of your tears and I've been slowly building an immunity. 
I was so unpopular in high school. The crossing guard tried to lure me into traffic. This party is a second chance at a fresh start. Jeff is covering his eyes. All right, now he's lost. I'm coming to your party. <laughs> Thank you. I'm putting you down for two bags of ice and a sleeve of paper cups. Here, library. Later, Pierce sits near Troy, who reads. Pierce looks around, then superstitiously takes out a pill box and starts taking the Friday pills. Taking the pill? Pierce turns to find Abed staring over his shoulder. Zeno Lavadin. That is my line. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was <laughs> actually said the line. Zeno <clears throat> Lavadin. My grandpa took that when he was around your age. Fantastic. Really helping him with his going problem. But by the time grandpa got up in his years, his memory wasn't great. You mix the wrong pills. You know how old people are. I've heard stories, yeah. One time, he started hallucinating and ran down the street with no pants on. And in the Gaza Strip, that's considered a real party foul. So be careful, because at your age... Listen to me. I don't need your advice. I'm not your pantsless grandpa. Pantsless grandpa. Dear studying room, day, 8 o'clock p.m. Ace party is in full sweep. It's decked out with various symbols of death, coffins, wreaths, skeletons, and on stilts. Creepy Mardi Gras-esque music plays. Troy is dressed as a Murphy in the Raw concert movie. Senior Chang is a mariachi. Britta is a squirrel. Jeff is not in a costume. Annie glides over to Britta wearing a long black robe and a skull mask, which she now lifts over her head like a hat. Britta, you're adorable. Oh, thanks. I hate it when women use Halloween as an excuse to dress up like sluts, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Annie removes her robe, revealing a skin-tight skeleton costume. Okay, I think we can begin. I've got everyone's personalized cookie to tombstones, pour tradition. She hands out cookie tombstones with each person's name. And in a few minutes, we're going to start the Dance of the Dead, La Danza de las Muertos. You don't have to keep doing that. It comes up to Jeff. It's really nice of you to be here. I'm sure you'd rather be out with your hot professor. Well, it's funny. I enrolled here as a selfish loner, but you and the group have given me a crash course in friendship. She blew you off, huh? She's grading papers. Professor Slater? She's not grading papers. She's at the faculty party in the cafeteria. Ah, it's the eavesdropping mariachi. Are you saying my people are sneaky? What? But it appears it's Batman. S Siles up. There is a dark storm. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's building on the horizon. But you and I will save the night. Are these real cheese? Very approaches Abed. Can I ask you something that I've always wanted to ask the real Batman? Yes. Am I good looking? You're a fancy, very handsome young man. <laughs> <laughs> Your center is dressed as Beastmaster from the early 80s movie, including wig, flesh colored top with fake abs, and muscles, and a fake owl on his arm. Let's get this party started. Pierce stops and stares confidently, arms akimbo. Who are you? I'm the Beastmaster from the movie. Beastmaster, what rock have you been living under? What are you going as? A gay douchebag? I'm kidding. Good one. I'm not much of a costume guy. You're not much of a liking ladies guy either. Body blow. I am on fire. Pierce moves off. Angle on Shirley approaching Jeff and Britta carrying drinks. She wears thick glasses, a scarf, and a dorky cardigan sweater. Hello. As the drinks, mates. Oh, thank you, Urkel. Shirley stares at Jeff. I'm Harry Potter. Whoops. Chang crosses by. What's up, Urkel? Interior library continuous. Pierce enters, places his bird's sidekick down, and starts playing pills from his organizer onto a table. 
Starburns enters dressed as Nurse Ratchet from Cuckoo's Nest. Sweet owl. He sees the pills. What are you taking tonight? Uh, cholesterol. <clears throat> you know, the usual cool stuff. Ludes, dreamers, Johnny boys. Starburns proceeds a, produces a pill container of his own. Trade you one of mine for two of yours. Starburns takes two of Pierce's pills and offers one of his. Right on I do. Ah, I thought I was talking to the Beastmaster. Did I say you weren't? Saddle up, fruit pie. Pierce takes the pill. Starburns takes two Pierce's they swallow. <coughs> Smooth. Interior study room a little later. The party continues. Senior Chang offers a clipboard to Jeff. Here, take this. Give anyone that shows up their stupid credit. You going to, to the faculty party? Let me be your plus one. Give it up, winger. Professor Slater doesn't date students or married Asians who drive mopeds. Give me 20 bucks. I'll bring the hog around. Ching moves off. Jeff grabs his coat. Britta observes it. Hang on, Annie, gathering the crowd. Okay, it's time for the Dance of the Dead. Everyone form a circle. Lights, music. Hobbit is standing by a laptop working the music. Is it on your genre or on a specific playlist? Pierce is reacting strangely to the lights and music. He approaches Starburns. Hey, guy. What did you slip me? I'm grinding my teeth and I want to kiss everybody. What did you slip me? My heart stopped racing and I can't pee. <laughs> Angle on Annie. The students have formed a circle. The lights dim and Abba cues music. Slightly trippy mariachi slash Mardi Gras music plays. Now, for the first dance, I would like to invite a very special guest to the floor. Jeff Winger? Jeff? She looks around. It's awkward. Exterior campus continuous. A tiny senior chank drives a giant Jeff on a moped. A car cuts him off. Nice blinker, ass face! <laughs> Interior study room continuous. He just stepped out. He'll be right back. Britta confides in Shirley. He's going to the faculty party. To be with Professor Short Skirt. We hate her. It's not about her, Shirley. I just can't believe Jeff would do this to Annie. Oh, yes, absolutely. It's about Annie. We should go find that bitch's car and snap off her antenna. Is Jeff gone? I don't know how I can stay. It's a news night. It's like high school all over again. Everyone's leaving. Pierce comes up behind her and starts rubbing her shoulders. Not me. I can do this all night. I Fade love you. Out. Oh, sorry. Fade out. End of act one. Back to fade in interior cafeteria. <sighs> Twenty minutes later, the faculty party is markedly adult with a stair a string trio caters in a bar with bartenders, Dean Pelton hosts in a tuxedo and masquerade ball mask. Professor Slater dressed as a racy Robin Hood struggles to get a top of a beer. A hand reaches into frame and grabs the beer. Tied on a cowboy boot as the top is popped off using a spur, wanting to reveal Jeff decked out in a sexy tailor cowboy outfit with hat, lasso, holster, and six shooters. There you go, pretty lady. What are you doing here? Showing you my non-student side. I have to admit, this outfit is doing it for me. I may or name may not be may or may not have been deflowered by a junior rodeo champion. You're reminding me of my first time as well. You lost your virginity to Robin Hood? No, to an attractive woman at a party. We seem destined to repeat history. I told you, no students. It's unseemly. I go out with you, you tell your friends, it gets around the school. What friends? I have no friends. I hate everyone, but you. Britta approaches uh, from Jeff's other side. Hey! Jeff turns to her. What are you doing here? Scolding you. What am I ever doing? Get back to that library before Annie is. Whoa. Yippee-ki-yay. Thought you weren't a costume guy. 
You need one to get in these. Yeah? Did you stop by a costume store? Because I don't think anyone would be open this late. I, um, I don't know what you mean. I think the words you're looking for are, I own a cowboy outfit. Tight, too. You buy it that way? Your toy gun to my head, and I'd say yes. Professor Slater joins the conversation. Hi, Michelle Slater, PhD. Rita Perry, GED. Oh, are you a classmate of Jeff's? Well, when you say classmate, it sounds like we paste and take naps together. The nice thing about community college is that a lot of the students are just as mature as the teachers. Abed runs in as Batman fluster, fluttering. Jeff, you must return to Annie's party. She's feeling unpopular. Fry runs in. Pierce took, oh, <clears throat> Pierce took something, man. He's tripping balls. He's touching people, dancing weird. It's like cocoon, but gross. Guys, I'm at a grown-up Halloween party, okay? You're being unseemly. Oh no. How are we unseemly? Why is Ergo ripping the antenna off Professor Slater's car? <laughs> Angle on Shirley up on the hood, foot braced, ripping off the antenna. It snaps off. She's exultant, then realizes she's being stared at. She turns defiantly. That's right, Professor Slim Cass. This is what you get when you steal Jeff from a good woman. Angle on everyone in sun silence. Slater stares at Jeff. Suddenly, P Pierce grooves in. He dances to the center of the room, gratifying to the music. Only he hears, stroking people's hair, grinding his teeth, rubbing his head. Everyone's watching him, including the dean. I don't want my money back. Meow, 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 meow. Is he meowing? Enough. I want you people out of here. Britta, I don't care about your high school soap opera. Abed, you're not Batman. Pierre, stop grinding on the women's studies department. You're too old to be tripping. I'm old? What do you mean old? Whose hands are these? Pierce runs out. Way to go. Britta leaves. I know. I know I'm not Batman. You don't have to be a jerk. He leaves. Jeff turns, collects himself, and straightens his hat and moseys to Professor Slater. Where were we, little doggy? Seemly. Yeah. Crap. Uh, she walks away. Um, interior hallway, night, decorate for Halloween. Britta is walking. Britta walks into an open office. Interior, Professor Slater's office later. Britta approaches the darkened office, noticing Professor Slater nameplate. We hear grunts and straining. Britta clicks the lights. Shirley flips the desk on its side. Shirley, what are you doing? <laughs> We're getting her, baby. Uh-oh, I think I see a fire. Shirley sprays things off the shelf with foam. Shirley, enough. I don't know how many ways to say this. I'm not jealous of Professor Slater. You think that. Then the next thing you know, your man is gone and you're home at night sitting on the hideous plaid couch his mother gave you, drinking what's left of his corbiester and watching Sandra Bullock movies in the hope that her relentlessly delightful persona will somehow get you through. Long silence. I have a confession to make. Some of what I just said is really about me. Curviester didn't feel universal. Shirley sits down on the side of the toppled desk. My ex-husband came by this morning. He asked for his ring back. It was his mother's and he wants to give it to his new girlfriend. I'm sorry, that sucks. Brita sits next to her. Don't get me wrong, the best thing that ever happened to me was him leaving, but I always thought he'd come crawling back and I get to get him to, I get to tell him to go to hell, but he couldn't even give me that. 
I'm so damn angry. And I know this seems crazy to be destroying some hot young professor's office, but it makes me feel better. You're right though. We should go. Shirley starts out, Britta stops there. Wait a minute. Let's finish this thing. Britta picks up the fire extinguisher, points it at the glass display case and lets it rip. Empty, it spits, then it dribbles a beat. She hurls it through the glass. Oh, that was nice. Interior, interior study room. A little later, Pierce staggers in. The party lamely continues on with a few loser guests and Annie sitting dependent. Pierce still reeling from Jeff's tongue flashing, having a bad trip. He fixates on the death imagery, skeletons, grim reapers, giant coffin, etc. Troy runs in after him. Pierce, you cool, man? The coolest. Man, all this death stuff really freaks me out. What could happen to any of us at any time? Last year, my uncle dropped dead. 65 years old. How old are you? How black are you? Pierce staggers off, sees a style death nightmare, a skeleton on stilt slabs, a grim reaper motions to come to me with a long finger. Music gets louder and louder. Pierce sees giant cookie tombstone on a table. He sees one that reads Pierce Hawthorne Rip. He's paralyzed with fear. He lets out a blood curling shriek. Everyone runs out. <laughs> Interior cafeteria later. Network. Uh, oh, sorry. Jeff stands alone, watching Professor Slater put on her coat. S Senior Chang approaches. Ooh, do I feel a breeze? Because somebody just struck out. She blew you off too, Chang. That's what you're leaning on. Look at me. I've got the body of a fifth grader. My parking space is a bike rack. If I was working what you've got, she'd be at the Comforts Inn with me right now, doing weird things to me with jam. I can't let this happen. Jeff walks over to her. Wait, I need to be with you tonight. And it's not about the sex or about the taunting I may have received from a tiny Asian man. It's about having one night where people don't look at me like a student at community college. A guy who has to save a teenager's party or wrangle a gyrating beast master. Tonight... I want to be with someone who can see me for who I really am, a sleazy lawyer. She laughs. I don't care what we do. We can talk, watch a movie, cuddle, do that ghost thing where we almost touch and that makes it hotter. If we're doing this, there's going to be sex. That's fine, too. Let's go before I change my mind. They start out. Jeff is on a cloud. He's... He does a happy, high-elbowed cowboy walk. Chang pulls him aside. Nicely done. My comfort in platinum card. It'll get you HBO West and one robe. Exterior library. A few minutes later, Jeff heads with Professor Slater towards her car, his arm around her. They pass our group and various lame party goers staying outside the doors, looking through the windows with concern. Pierce, it's okay. Come out of there. Tied on Pierce in the classroom, peering through some kind of desk fortress. You're not getting me yet. I'm not ready to die. Walking, they can handle this. There's no reason to fear death. You've lived a decent, moral life. You're going to heaven, right? Jeff reluctantly stops. Britta notices a guy in a grim reaper outfit peering at Pierce through the window. She pulls him away. Dude, not helping. Jeff, he's freaking out. You're the only one who can help him. What makes you think that? Is Jeff out there? He's the only one who can help. I can't believe I'm going to do, I'm doing this but I think I have to say goodnight. So you're saying you'd rather stay here with them than spend the night with me? Are you like a corn-appointed guardian for these people? No, they're my classmates. Good night, Jeff. She kisses him on the cheek and exits. Jeff stares at the comfort in platinum card wistfully. He heads in. Cheng 
mopeds by holding up an L on his helmet. In tier study room later, Jeff enters to find Pierce has built a giant precarious fortress incorporating props from the study room and party. What in the Pink Floyd? Pierce, come out of there. No. Jeff sighs, gets on his hands and knees and crawls into the fort. He sits next to Pierce, cross-legged on the floor. A quiet beat. I'm old, Jeff. No, you're not. People see me as youthful, fun, fierce. Always there with the coolest Halloween costume or a witty ethnic joke, just on the right side of good taste. But inside, I'm scared. I feel like I'm fighting to stay alive. Why do it? These Mexican skeletons are right. No matter what I do, I'm going to die. You're fighting because you're not done, Pierce. You have an entire life left to live. I am friends with a young African-American. Yeah, and you think the system wants that? They want you tucked away on a golf course or a cruise, but you're here where the action is. I hope I'm half as young as you when I'm your age. Yeah. Dude, you're the beast master. I'm the beast master. Pierce pumps a fist, accidentally knocking out a low bearing desk. The fortress shudders and sways. Pierce and Jeff react as it starts to collapse on them. Suddenly, we see a cape dark figure whoosh by. As the fortress comes down, we see Abed as Batman heroically, pull- <clears throat> heroically pulling Jeff and Pierce to safety. The dust sells and Abed runs off. Who was that man? Reveal that our group. And a crowd of party goers have assembled in the room and are watching from a safe distance. Jeff stands and dusts off his chaps. What are we standing around for? I thought this was a party. Annie, I think you owe me a dance. He holds out his arm. She smiles, takes it, and takes it. Music cue. Interior study room. A few minutes later, the party is back on. Our group dances. Jeff and Annie, Shirley and Pierce, Britta and Troy. A few others. As the music continues to play, we pull out of the library, interior library, same time, pan up to the top of a building to find Abed in his Batman costume standing on the ledge. He nods proudly, mission accomplished. Fade out, end of show. Wait, wait, wait. I have the Batman monologue that Abed says. All right. All right. All right. If I stay, there can be no party. I must be out there in the night. Staying vigilant. Wherever a party needs to be saved, I'm there. Wherever there are masks, wherever there's tomfoolery and joy, I'm there. But sometimes I'm not, because I'm out at the night, staying vigilant, watching, lurking, running, jumping, hurtling, sleeping. No, I can't sleep. You sleep. I'm awake. I don't sleep. I don't blink. Am I a bird? No, I'm a bat. I am Batman. Or am I? Yes, I am Batman. Happy Halloween. (laughs) (laughs) And with that amazing performance from Chris as Abed, as Christian Bale, as Batman, that is a wrap on the community table read. I hope you guys have had a good time. I know I know I have. I hope my crew has. Well, Kyle, Mm -hmm. you're not cool anyway, so shut up. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I don't have any more JP, do you have any uh, factoids you want to leave with the uh, with the people? I don't have any factoids other than uh, Justin Lin directed this, and uh, he went on to obviously bigger, better things. There well, you go. Yeah. And so you too can be great if you write an episode of Community. Correct. Well, too bad. Too bad it's over now. Maybe not. Six seasons in a movie. Who knows? Six seasons in a movie, man. Six seasons in a movie. Oh, Thomas, were you saying something? Well, but hold on. before we go, I do want to say something. Okay. I didn't just masturbate in the study room. I masturbated everywhere. <laughs> everywhere! <laughs> oh my God. As you can tell, some lines and stuff were omitted, but that is just a process of uh, screenwriting. So, I hope you guys have had a wonderful time. Uh, check out Unscripted with Chris and Luke. Description. Uh, Link in the description. Check out Al Pacino's Prison Scene Podcast. Link in the description. 
uh, stay tuned. HBO Max, HBO Max girls working on some stuff. Uh, that's <laughs> JP's fiance. That's we don't care about him only for that. Check out uh, our boys here. They got some stuff out on YouTube. Go check that out. And with that, we leave you a stout and sour crow. Give us another time.